Anybody, when I lived in Tennessee, used to be a big, uh, a lot of people like to listen to Dave Ramsey. Anybody listen to Dave Ramsey? Okay, so some, some, some people love him, some people hate him. I think he's pretty insightful about a lot of things. But, but one of the things he does is he asks people to do some, some things that are a little bit different with their money. Okay, and he's real big on no debt and, and not, not overextending yourself, not going out and borrowing a bunch of money for this and that. And, and it's pretty simple, basically, only buy things that you actually have money for, right? Which, which you wouldn't think would be all that revolutionary, but that's not where most people live their lives. And so he'll talk to these people on the radio, and he's like, you know, you probably don't need a $90,000 vehicle when you're making $20,000 a year, right? And, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and their response is, oh, I don't know. I can do it without this. And, you know, my wife's got to have something dependable to drive. And they're, I mean, you don't, it doesn't cost 90 to be dependable, okay? And, and, and they're going on about this. And, and basically what, what they're saying is, you know, I don't want to be weird, because, because, you know, it's just, it's just normal for, for people to, to do crazy things with their money. And, and he says something that, that always got my attention. He says, he said, guys, I don't want to be normal. Normal is broke. Yeah. Right? In the world we live in, normal is broke. Normal is I owe a whole lot more money than I have. I want to have a lot more money than I owe. And that's kind of his, his mantra, right? And I, I was thinking about that when I thought about our lesson for this afternoon about societal norms. And we, we can spend a lot, of try, a lot of time just trying to fit in, just trying to be like the world that's all around us. But I want us to know that normal's broke, and I don't want to be broke. And from a spiritual point of view, in particular when you think about men in the world, guys, you don't, you don't want to be normal. Normal men don't, don't spend time in prayer to God. Normal men don't take care of their families. Normal men, they don't protect themselves sexually and in their minds. Normal men, normal men don't, don't share the gospel. Normal men don't, don't prioritize their families. Normal men don't walk with the Lord. This is weird what y'all are doing here today. Is that right? I didn't say you're weird. I said, this is weird. I mean, you, you don't even have to compare, you don't even have to compare to, to, to the world. You can just kind of look within your congregations about people that are really spiritually engaged in what you want to be. I mean, I, I'm raising my kids. I know I'm not as old as the brother here, so he can give me some sage advice. But, 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 but my daughter turned 18 yesterday, and I started thinking about, about what we talked about when she was little and this idea that I'm not okay with just being like everybody else. I'm not okay with just being like everybody else that goes to church. I'm not okay with that in the raising of my children. I'm not okay with that when it comes to being a man of God. My standard is going to be different than what's normal. And so, so what I want us to think about today is, well, stepping out of the boat. By the way, when Peter was in the boat, were there other people in the boat? How many people got out of the boat? Only one. Everybody else, pretty good guys, pretty godly guys, they stayed quite put in the boat. And for all the slack we give Peter, he did something that nobody else in this world besides Jesus has ever done. He actually walked on water. Right? Right? Because he wasn't like everybody else, not even in the boat. So I want to I be different. I don't want to be normal. I want to be godly. Well, th there are lots of places in the Bible where we have th this idea of, of, what, of what this means to be, to be a godly man as, as opposed to a normal man. Peter, when he writes the book of 1 Peter. Now, 1 Peter is this book. It's all about uh, doing the right thing and suffering for it. Right? In our world today, we do pretty good with, I'm going to do the right thing, and then people are going to thank me for it. I'm going to preach a sermon, and somebody's going to say, Brother, that was so good. I love, I love comments like that. Right? How do I do when, when I preach the sermon, and somebody, and somebody says, You stink. You don't even know how to pray, brother. Right? I mean, I, I don't enjoy that. 
Well, that's kind of what 1 Peter is about. That's why he says Christ is our example, not just in perfection. He's our example in righteous suffering. Well, when you do what's right, sometimes difficult things come as a result of that. Peter would say in 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 4, with respect to this, they, those in the world, the normal people, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery and they malign you. I mean, what is wrong with you? Do you think that you're better than us? I mean, do you, do you, do you think, well, you're, you're just, just holier, holier than thou, right? You're, 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 you're together with a bunch of men. Listen, what, what you guys know is that usually when you get together with a bunch of men, so some of you guys work in all-male workplaces, those are not godly places. Okay? But you, go, you have to work in those places. You're around those places. I've been in those places. Hey, what happens, what happens when somebody starts selling dirty jokes? And, and, oh, by the way, you're a Christian. You're the light of the world. And somebody starts telling dirty jokes, and, and, and it's pro probably a funny joke. Right? I mean, sometimes things aren't supposed to be funny. They are funny. And you're sitting there, and, how, and, and you say, I, I'm, I'm not going to participate in that. Well, I'm just going to tell you, that's going to go over like a ton of bricks. Right? Well, you, you got a problem? You got a problem with these things? How about, how about when somebody makes a, a sexual comment? Hey, man, hey, man, I was, I was on the internet last night, and you'll know, I mean, look at this. Right? You were, and, and man, I'm, I'm trying not to look. I'm, try, I'm trying not to see those things. Guarantee you, some of your buddies are going to show you some stuff. They're going to say, look at this. And, and, and every fiber of your being is going to say, let me see. But that godly part of you is going to say, I've made a covenant with my eyes. How's that going to go over when you say, I, don't, I try not to look at stuff like that? I'm not, I'm not even trying to be ugly towards you. I'm, I'm just trying to not do that myself. That's what he says. They're not going to understand. They're going to be surprised. Hey, man, after work tonight, you want to come with us? We're, 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 going, to go, we're going to go get a beer after, after work. Or maybe, maybe you like to live in the, the high class part of society. And man, just, that's what everybody's doing. Everybody's drinking at, at these events. Why wouldn't you come and be a part of these things? We have to understand that society is not going to understand. And society, what's normal, is changing, isn't it? See, see we, we, we struggle with this because, because there was a time in which we lived in a society that had been heavily influenced by godliness and by the things of God. Uh, you, you're, so some of your parents and your grandparents, they grew up in this world. Even people that, 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 that didn't go to church had some sense of what was right and what was wrong and what was godly and ungodly. That's all going away. Our world is changing. And I'm not that old. But I'm going to tell you, I live in a different world than I lived in just 20 years ago. Social change that, that, that used to take hundreds of years is happening in months today. Sometimes, sometimes in weeks today. Moral change is going on in warp speed. And so there, 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 there used to be things that would have universal acceptance or universal condemnation. The, the, those days are gone. And so what's happening is the world is becoming less and less godly. And so as the world becomes less and less godly, when I try to stand as a godly man, I'm going to stand out like a sore thumb more and more. I try to think about what, what would it be like to, to try to explain to my grandfather... My grandfather's been passed away about 10 years, okay? So if I was to go to my grandfather, and I, was try I wanted to explain to him, okay, so there's this thing going on in the Northeast and the NCAA, and there's, there's this guy, a man, right? He's got all the man parts. And last year, he was on the, the, the boys' college swim team. And he was okay. You know, he wasn't the best that they had on him, but he was okay. But this year, that guy has said, has, is telling everybody, I'm a girl. He still has the boy parts, but he's saying, I'm a girl, and he's on the girls' swim team, and he is dominating. Now, y'all don't even look shocked. I'm going to tell you, if I said that to my grandpa, do you know what he would say? You have lost your mind. What are you, what, what are you talking about? You got a boy on the girls' swim team? I mean, what, what, what is wrong with him? And I said, no, 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 no. He's, he, you, you, you can't even call him him, right? He and she. I mean, that's, I mean, you, you, I'm just saying that, that we're dealing with things in our world today that you go back into any moment in the pages of history would make absolutely no sense to those people. But that's the world we live in. 
That's the world we live in, and you don't, you don't have to go off to the edges of the news. I'm telling you that you can go into your local high school and you're going to see these things. Is that a true statement? Shake your head up and down. It's a true statement. That's the world that we live in. If you don't go to the high school, go, go to your local mall and you'll see these things. You see, normal and godly are different. Normal, normal men, normal men look for opportunities to get away from their families. Godly men look for opportunities to grow closer to their families. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, you are, the, you are the salt of the earth. That's who we're supposed to be. But if the salt loses its taste, how shall it be salt? How shall its salt and it be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under, under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. This idea, if all the lights are out, if it's pitch black in here and I turn on a light, and I turn on a light, you're going, you're going to see that, right? Those things are going to stand out. Hey, he's a Christian. Did you know he's a Christian? Would the people that you live with, that, that you work with, if they, were, if, they were, if they were to say that about you, would people be shocked? Would people that you, that, that you spent tons of time with be shocked that you're a Christian? If, if someone were to say, oh yeah, Wes, he's a, he, he's a real American, guys. He's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Right? Some of you guys know me. Does that shock you? Somebody says I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan? No, you know I'm patriotic. Right? So, so I'm, if, if, if someone were to say, uh, uh, you know Wes, man, he is tight with his money. He loves a good deal on a hamburger. Right? Brian, does that shock you? Nope. You'd be disappointed in anything less. Right? What if somebody said, oh yeah, he's a Christian. Wouldn't that shock you? I worked with a guy for like three months. Worked right beside him every single day. We got towards the end of the summer. This is why I was in college. I was working at, a, at an aluminum factory. And, and we worked together every day. In the end of the summer, he said, oh yeah, I'm a member of the church. And I remember thinking, well, you're not doing a very good job at it. Because I didn't even know you were a member of the church. And then I got a little bit older, and I was, ref I was reflecting upon that. I was growing up a little bit, and I was thinking about how, what a bad job he did of actually being the light of the world. And then I thought, well, you know what? I'm not doing a very good job at it either, because I never talked to him about it for the last three months. Right? We're to be a light of the world. Normal men, normal men in the world, they look for ways that they can look cool in front of everyone else. Godly men look for opportunities to look like Jesus in front of men. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 3. Paul's, Paul's trying to write to the church, trying to help the church grow. And he says, okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem that we're running into that's keeping you from growing. This goes back to that comfort thing. The problem is you're still carnal. We're going to have a whole lesson on this. So I'm going to stay here for a minute, but I'm going to move on. One of y'all's got a lesson. you got a lesson. Okay, he looks, he's like, I'm not going to preach. So, so, so we're, going to have, we're going to have a whole lesson on this. But he says, here's the problem. You're carnal. You're fleshly. For where there are envy, strife, division among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? This is what keeps you from growing. This is what keeps you from growing. You're acting like mere men. You're acting just like everybody else. Somebody said, well, man, I'm just a man. I'm just a man. That's not good enough. That's not the excuse. We're, we're called to be more than just men. We're called to be more than just creatures of flesh who, who say whatever we feel like saying and do whatever we feel like doing. We're not to be just men. We're to be men of God. Normal men are led by the flesh, but godly men are led by the Spirit of God. We have to understand these things. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1, as he writes to the church there about, about this incestuous relationship, he says it is actually reported. I'm thinking about what's going on in that church there. It's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. And sexual immorality, as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. Listen, there has to be this distinction between what we will tolerate and what we will not tolerate. The world... Isn't it a shame? Isn't it a shame when, when the church or people that claim to be the church that belongs to Jesus will tolerate things that even the world won't tolerate? But the more and more the world moves away from God, the, the more and more we're going to stand out and people are not going to say, well, I at least appreciate them for taking a stand. 
No. The most basic of things is going to become more and more controversial in our world. You guys remember, what was it, about a year ago? Some of you guys from the Atlanta area, you may remember more, more of this. But you remember what happened at, 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 the, at, the, Woodstock, at the Woodstock Church of Christ? And they were, and they were trying to deal with, with a, situation, uh, a, a situation up there. that They had a, they had a lady... I'm going to give you the 10 cent version. You can Google it and get all these details, right? But, 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 but they had a lady who basically had decided to leave her family, to leave her husband, to leave her children in order to enter into a lesbian relationship. Okay? Anybody in here want to justify that? No. That's crazy. What in the world's going on there? And the church would reach out to her. They would try to, try to encourage her, try to bring her back, and she wouldn't respond, so on and so forth. Right until they, they, got, they got to the end of, of this whole process, and they said, listen... We're going, we're going to make a public announcement that we are no longer in fellowship. Well, duh, you left your family and you're in, entered in, into an active lesbian relationship. That, 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 in, in what world would anybody, even that person, think that, that they're still in relationship with Christ? And so they sent her this letter. You know what happened? Everything erupted. Social media happened. It, everything, everything be, be, began to erupt, and it was all over social media, thousands and thousands of posts. You can read about it in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. There's a couple different articles that, that, that were written about this, that there were elders in the church who had their names out front there, right? And that, that they started to, to receive death threats. There were people that lost their jobs. There was, a, there was a protest that was playing at that congregation. They went down. They, they filed out the paperwork. The police came and said, listen, next Sunday morning, we expect there to be 200 to 300 people right here in this congregation, and they're not, they're not godly people that are coming. That, that's the world we live in, right? And, and the police were telling, we'll have a police presence here. We'll have them, we'll have them in, in, their, in their uniforms. And we're going to have police here, even, even mixed among the people in, in plain clothes. Because we're fearful of what's going to happen. I'm not, that, that, that's, I'm not talking about the Middle East. I'm talking about Georgia. Right? I'm talking about the Bible Belt. Right? Not the buckle like Tennessee. But it's still the Bible <laughs> Belt where those things are happening. And, I mean, and these... I talked to one of their members who has small children, and, 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 she, and she, was, she was telling me, she said, and I'm struggling to know what to do. I mean, do I take my children to church? Do I take them to that place where I know there are going to be people that are going to be mad and angry and vile? What do I do? I'm just telling us that those are the things where, where we've got we to learn to step out the boat. And it is scary. I'm telling you, if you tell me that tomorrow there's going to be 200 people show up at Forest Park as, as an angry mob, I'm going to be nervous about it. I'm going to be anxious about those things. And I need to turn to the Lord. I need to get out of the boat and not be guided just by societal norms. Why? Peter says, because you are a chosen race, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession. I mean, your Bible says you are a peculiar people. This is supposed to be something different. You're called out from the world. Why? That you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Normal men talk about the things of the world. Godly men proclaim the words and proclaim through their words and through their deeds the glory of God. We must not be guided by what the world looks like around us. See, the problem is, the problem is that the world has started to influence our, our view of the church rather than the church influencing the world's view of God. We see that all the time. Just talk to someone. Let someone start sharing their thoughts or their theology about who God is or the nature of God or what the church ought to look like. And I'm going to tell you, 90% of the time, you, you're, you're going to get something that has zero to do with God's revelation, everything to do with what the world is saying about what God is. And so the world is defining Christianity. And people that don't know any better, people that aren't reading their Bibles, are just buying it and being influenced by those things. That's why you see churches. That's why you see churches openly supporting the most vile and sinful activities that the, that the Word clearly condemns. But yet people are, people are standing up and they're saying, well, yeah, we're a church and we, we accept everyone just as they are. 
Well, anyone can come to Christ just as they are, but no one stays just as they are. That's true about other people, and it's true about me, and it's true about you. We've got to get out of the boat of societal norms. We have to understand, Christians can't be in love with the world. Now, you all know that, right? Everybody knows I'm, I'm not supposed to love the world. I'm supposed to, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm, supposed to, I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to understand that, that we're opposed to the world. Now, I know that the, that the Bible says God loves the world. That's not the type of love we're talking about here, right? We're, we're talking about the things of the world, not the people of the world. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life, it's not from the Father, but it's from the world. So what are the things of the world? Well, we've already listed several of them, right? Women, money, career and advancement, entertainment. See, all those, all those things good. Now, I don't like women, but I like a woman, right? That's, that's the blessing of God. I don't want my life to be, to be all about money, but I do appreciate the raise I got last year. Thank you, guys, very much, right? <laughs> I mean, all these things, there's nothing wrong. Having a job is better than not having a job. I like to watch, you know, I like to sit down and relax every once in a while. But what happens is, these things that are good things, they're blessings, they become idols. They become the things that drive men. I want to see how many women I, I, I can have, how many women I can see. I want to have, I want to have not just enough. My, my ambition all of a sudden is not to live a quiet life as the Bible says, but my, admission, but, 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 but my goal in life is to, is to die with the most toys. And all of a sudden, I got a problem. I got a problem because I'm working, 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 compromising, 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 all in the name of, of money. I, I want to climb the ladder. I want to get a promotion. But I'm going to tell you, I, I've, got, I've got friends of mine, and they, they've advanced greatly. They have a lot of possessions, but they paid a price to get there. They paid a price to get there. They've, they, 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 they've worked 70, 80 hours every single week for years. I'm not talking about sometimes, every once in a while. Sometimes you've got to get stuff done. I'm talking about this is a way of life. I'm just going to tell you, if you're working 70 to 80 hours every week, and it's not because if you, if you stop, people are going to starve to death. From the looks of this room, ain't nobody going to starve to death anytime soon. right? That's not why you're doing it. There's a price you're paying for that. And it's a price, it's a spiritual price in your own soul, in your, in your wife's soul, in your children's soul, in your church's soul. Normal men love the world. Godly men love the Father. If someone were to ask, what does he really love? What would others say? We got examples like Demas in 1 John 4. This is the same book, so it's written Demas came out in my mind. But in Demas, uh, in 1 John 4 and verse 10, Demas in love with this present world. D Demas a good guy or a bad guy? He's a good guy. I mean, he's like, he's going out there preaching with Paul. Right? TJ, you ever get to preach with Paul? Would, would, I mean, would, would your mama be telling people if you got like, yeah, he's going out with the Apostle Paul. Right? I, I think she'd be telling people all about that. But you never got to. So, so she did. I mean, Demas did. So, I mean, he had something going on. But he was in love with the world. So he's deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. I, I, don't, I don't know why Demas left, but at some, point, at some point Demas said, I'd rather have that than I would the Lord. Well, I don't know what that is. and I, Maybe it's on purpose because we've, because we've all seen people walk away for different things. I'd rather have that woman than I would the Lord. Do I need to write like real names down with, with, with that story? If you've been in leadership at any time at all? How many people, by this isn't just for men, but we're all men and women do the same thing. But I'll choose that person over the Lord. They don't frame it that way, but that's exactly what they do. I'd rather have that money than I would have the Lord. That's why you see churches that will compromise in terms of what is right and wrong. I know it happens, right? And I know why, because of the pressures. I mean, money's got real pressure, right? Right? So all this, but, but the, the choices become guided by these things. I'd rather have that than I would the Lord. We cannot live that way. 
Normal men neglect spiritual things for the things of the world. But I'm telling us that godly men neglect the things of the world for spiritual things. May we not be guided by societal norms. When this happens, you got to know there's going to be conflict. There's going to be conflict. Some of the biggest things that I've seen in the church uh, in, in different places is this idea that somehow we, we, we're going we're to preach the truth, we're going to stand for the things of God, and, and everybody's going to love us for it. Right? And, and, if, and if they don't love you for it, it's because, well, maybe, maybe you're saying it in the wrong way. Maybe you were overly harsh. Maybe, maybe you were a hypocrite. By the way, all those things can, can be true, right? I mean, I've seen, are there people that are overly harsh? Yes. Are there some men? I mean, okay, right up here in the front row, right? He, he trains preachers, he knows, right? There are, people, there are people that cause conflict and they cause it, right? That's, that's not what we're talking about. Listen, because, because if you think you can preach the Word of God and never cause conflict, you're telling me that you can do something that Jesus couldn't do. And He was always perfect. And He always said it the right way, at the right time, with the right motivation, right? And completely consistent. I don't do any of those things, hardly ever, okay? Because of my flesh. Jesus always did it right, and they put Him on a cross. Now, I'm not trying to justify, right? I'm not trying to say, well, if they hate me, then that's, I'm right with the Lord. That, that don't go there. But understand, there's going to be conflict. Jesus says, if you are of the world, then the world would love you as its own. But because you're not of the world, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. You think you can... You think you can live life? You think you can lead your family without conflict? No, you can't. That, that means you're going to have to do some things and be misunderstood. You're going to... I hate being misunderstood. You ever have someone explain to you why you did what you did? I mean, just hold on tight when that's... I mean, because it's always bad, right? Like, you, what kind of terrible person do you think I am? That's, that's going to happen. And I've I got to be okay with that. Right? It's what Peter says. I mean, when I, that I've got to take that, take that trust that when people slander, slander you, that they're the ones that will be put to shame. People that know, know, and people that don't know are never going to know. And I've got to be okay with that because the Lord knows. You, 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 you can't raise your sons and your daughters. You can't lead your home. You can't lead your churches without some conflict. Don't, don't be the fighting house or the fighting church, okay? That, that's not what we want to be. But there's going to be conflict. This fight's coming whether you want it or not. Those, those people in Ukraine right now. Listen, they don't want a war. But apparently a war showed up. That's the only kind of wars we ought to be fighting in the church. I don't, I don't want to fight. As much as depends upon me, I'm going to what? Be at peace with all men. Right? Man, I want people to say, if Wes is fighting, somebody, somebody made him fight. Because he is not easily provoked. When he is reviled, he does not revile in return. See, that's what Jesus did, but that's what you're supposed to do with your wife. Well, she provoked me. I had somebody say that. He, she, she provoked me. So? So what's the qualification of an elder of a godly man? Not easily provoked. Not easy. I had an elder pitch a big old hissy fit right there in front, right there in front of the church. Okay? And his wife said, well, he was provoked. He was provoked. I'm not doubting that. That doesn't make it right. Right? So, so understand, the conflict is coming. Be ready for it. Normal men hide in a hole. Godly men stand on the rock. Listen, we've got to be different because we're going to be different in the judgment. Jesus said, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 32, Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. i got to be different in the world because we're going to be different in eternity. See, in, in your booklet, um, there, there's a, there, there are these, these tributes, uh, honorariums, uh, and one, one of them is for, is for our brother Spin Broom, who always led singing here. He led singing at Forest Park. Um, he, was, he was my lunch buddy. We, we hit every restaurant in town pretty regular and with lots of good memories. And he loved, he loved, loved coming to Standing in the Gap. Um, and he passed away. His time in this world is gone. And, 
And I talked to Renee this morning. I shared with her what you guys had put in the book, and she wanted me to thank you for it. Uh, it really, really means a lot to her, and I'll take that to her. But as time in this world is gone, can, can I tell you, I, I don't have any doubts about where he's at today. I don't have those doubts. I mean, we, we grieve, but we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Our home is in heaven. Let not your heart be troubled, right? Isn't that what Jesus says? He has gone to prepare a place for us, and if it were not so, He would have told us. He told us it's the opposite. He said, I did go to prepare a place for you. So, so I, I desperately want to be different in eternity. By the way, because normal is lost. Isn't that right? Isn't that what Jesus says? In, in Matthew chapter 7, he says, he says, There is a broad way that many will find, and there is a narrow way that few will find. Normal's broke. Normal is lost. Normal men perish, but godly men abide with the Lord forever.